spoke about this water for gas system last week, but one police department in the upstate has been looking at this for months. Now they're using it. It looks like a regular SUV, but it's not. Misleading because it's an undercover Honey Path police vehicle and also because it's running on something experimental. People life at you for trying some things, but if you don't try, you don't know. Honey and Pat Police Department has just six cars and a few officers and doesn't have a big budget for a large gas bill. So they're using water for gas. Yeah, we've had a few snickers uh, from uh, some people in town that just don't believe it. And naturally, I was skeptical of it when the mayor would talk about it. He's talking about the water for gas system. You build it and attach it to the engine. It then produces hydrogen and oxygen, or what the water for gas people call HHO. It's supposed to give you better gas mileage. You know, the numbers speak for themselves. Six to eight miles per gallon is, is, is a pretty good number, pretty good increase. So. They discussed it for six months before trying it out, now planning to put the HHO system on all Honeypath town cars. I had done research on it, and uh, with the situation like it is, and you and I fuel costs is so going up so high that I felt like I had to do something to try to save the taxpayers' money here in our town. The mayor's even putting it on his personal car. Works officials continue looking into hydrogen as an answer to cutting fuel costs. Tests started last fall. Rock County reporter Brad Chameson tells us with the new technology, the city has some high hopes for the future. And Brad tells us the boosters not only increase performance, but officials say it also improves emissions. Now, in one truck, hydrocarbon emissions drop to zero parts per million when the system is up and running. What we're going to try and do is displace as much fossil fuel as possible. Since Beloit started looking into hydrogen boosters in November, everything has changed. The electronics controls were not available at that time, and now, I mean, it's, it's almost unheard of to buy one of these units without full electronic controls. The new generation of boosters still uses electricity to separate water into hydrogen and oxygen and burn hydrogen for fuel. But the addition of electronic controls and computers if, means a more... If you imagine that uh, you have two pencils and you sharpen those pencils at both ends, you've now created two electrodes. And if you attach the tops of these two ends, these sharpened pencils, to a 9-volt battery and you stuck them in water and added a little salt, uh, like sodium chloride table salt, you would actually see bubbles coming off one electrode and bubbles coming off the other electrode. And you would have oxygen molecules coming off one and hydrogen coming off the other. That's called water splitting, and that's electrolysis. So what's going into the engine is the fuel and an oxygen-hydrogen mixture coming from the electrode. Uh, a little over 300 pieces of equipment currently. When you, when you use the hydrogen fuel cells on these vehicles, uh, hydrocarbon particles per million drop tremendously. So there's a lot less pollution coming out of the exhaust. Uh, that's due to a clean combustion and uh, because of the, the, the added hydrogen. We look at the, the system or this project to be able to help our city financially and environmentally. So if the hydrogen project can help us in those two areas. It more than does what we set out to do. Uh, we're, we work for the taxpayers of this community, um, and that was our goal: is to do something to, you know, help help the community, and that's reducing our costs through technology. It, it's wonderful. I I I like to see it on all. <laughs> so.